Hi, my name is Dr. David Scratchley and I'm a psychologist working in Seattle, Washington who specializes in the treatment of addiction. I work with both adolescents and adults who are addicted and today I'd like to begin by talking with you about club drugs. I have a presentation for you today called Club Drugs and Over-the-Counter Medication Abuse. The updated story you're free to go to and I invite you to go to my website www.drugseminars.net and to download the material in this presentation as well as to check out other material at the website which I think you might find useful if you're coping with the issue of addiction in a loved one, specifically an adolescent or a teen. So to begin with, when we start to talk about club drugs, we know there are a number of different types of club drugs. Now we call them club drugs because in the 1990s and into the earlier part of uh, 2000 and beyond, we noticed that there were situations in which adolescents came together to dance or to hold parties and these of course in the 1990s were called raves and many of these drugs that we're about to talk about ended up being used at these raves. Now the first one I'd like to talk about is a compound we call ketamine or Special K which is a relative of the drug PCP. Now ketamine or Special K was originally used in anesthesiology to create a state of what we call dissociation where the person feels out of their body. He or she feels as if they're looking back upon their body from some distant location. And this is a high that people who use this drug get. Now it also causes, when the person is high, the person to have actually a state of psychosis occur. The person may hallucinate vividly, see things that aren't there especially. This is all extremely common. This is an addictive compound. Now people who are using this particular compound typically have elevated vital signs, meaning pulse and blood pressure, but also their eyes move almost like doll eyes of uh, days of old. If you were growing up, if you had a doll many years ago, or maybe you've inherited or seen these dolls, that when you move the head, the eyes seem to stay straight. This is the way in which a person who has used a lot of ketamine or even PCP looks. It's, it's what we call doll eyes. And so if the person shows the signs of being psychotic, in other words, they're hearing and seeing things that aren't there, they have uh, uh, an elevated pulse and blood pressure, and their eyes seem to be moving in a funny way, that's a pretty good sign that this person may have used something like ketamine and PCP. And obviously, a doctor needs to see them right away. Now, there are other club drugs. One that I'm especially concerned about is one called gamma hydroxybutyrate, or GHB, or liquid X. Now this has been around a long time, literally since the 1950s, and has been tried in all sorts of fields of medicine without a lot of success. But it was sold for many years as a dietary supplement, not as a drug. People used to use it if they were bodybuilders, there was some thought that this helped to build muscle tissue. Whether or not that's true is yet to be seen. It is an addictive compound, but what we're concerned about is the fact that when it's mixed with alcohol, it can cause cardiovascular arrest. So it has a very strong uh, interaction with alcohol and can cause essentially a heart attack. And it also causes the person not to be able to move their arms or limbs very well. And it makes it so that they don't have very much of a, a memory. It has some psychiatric uh, components to the way it acts so people can become quite disturbed if they've had this drug in their system. But what concerns me the most is it is in the clubs. It's extremely cheap. People can make it and they do. The solution that you see in this picture, this, this little vial of this drug is virtually uh, tasteless and has no uh, odor, no taste. So it's very, very hard to detect. So people have done things like to pour it in people's drinks, to use it for date rape because the person comes and nestic meaning they don't remember things, they can't move their limbs to defend themselves, and it somewhat causes a state of dissociation where you feel out of your body and even a little bit sedating. Of course, it's very dangerous if they mix this with alcohol because it can cause an overdose. Also, people have done such sinister things as to inject it into fruit and give it to people with the intent of raping them or even into chocolates that have cream-filled fillings. So it's a very, very serious drug from the date rape standpoint. Let's take a look at another drug that we see in the clubs. And I think this one is probably most familiar to my listeners here tonight. That's ecstasy. Ecstasy is a derivative of methamphetamine. So when we think about methamphetamine, 
people spot that as being a dangerous drug, I'd like you to think when you hear ecstasy, it's equally even maybe possibly more dangerous to the user. People call the Skittles today. It can be pill stamped to look like cartoon characters. It's extremely addictive. When people use this, you can get ex excruciatingly very high, dangerously high body temperatures, way up there, 109, 110 degree body temperatures. People get sick and die from that. It has neurological components. People are concerned that this might do damage to parts of the brain involved in movement. And very clearly, when you use this drug, you do get depressed. And we discovered that even after a couple of doses or even one dose, a person may be depressed for uh, days, if not even weeks. So if somebody goes out on a Saturday night and is depressed on a Sunday morning for the next couple of weeks, and, and we notice that they're chewing on things because a lot of times it causes gnashing of the teeth, so people use pacifiers to keep from biting their tongues and gums. If you see those types of signs, that's a good indication that you might want to be thinking a little bit about, is this ecstasy? Let's go on to another drug that we see in the clubs. And this one will be familiar to our listeners here, our, our attendees to this, <coughs> to this presentation. This is LSD in the mushrooms. There's a lot of different hallucinogenic substances in the world. LSD in America is one that's been used for many, many years. It's very powerful. When people get involved with this particular compound, they can change themselves so that even when the drug is out of their system, he or she may remain what we call psychotic, in other words, out of touch with his or her environment. Though, so although it's not typically a drug that has lethal overdoses, it does have sort of psychiatric overdoses where the person develops all these signs of hallucinations that won't go away, what we used to call a bad trip. Likewise with mushrooms, there's a couple of risks. One is that the person may get a mushroom that's not a hallucinogenic mushroom, it might be a dangerous mushroom. People pick all sorts of mushrooms and try to sell them. That can be extremely dangerous if you don't know what you're purchasing. The other thing that occurs with mushrooms, again, is that you might get into a situation where you are unable to stop hallucinating once you stop using it. While I'm on this topic, I might point out there is a sage plant called salvia that, that people are smoking in hookahs or water pipes that causes very short bursts of hallucinations. This is very, very popular with younger people. And I will tell you, as a psychologist who cares for people, seeing people stuck in these hallucinatory states for years on end following the use of salvia. So I'm, I tend to think it's a very, very serious type of compound, despite the fact Many, in many states, it's still legal. Now let's take a look at another uh, trend that we see in the clubs at this point, and that is over-the-counter drugs. This may surprise you, but dextromethorphan, which is found in like Robitussin, uh, Benadryl, Diphenhydramine, these are popular drugs. People are mixing them with codeine and drinking high quantities of these particular drugs and, and creating what we call robo. Uh, tripping and this is is in fact much more dangerous than what people would at first think we've had several people die in the nation from robo tripping where they take lots and lots of robitussin or bottle upon bottle of benadryl to get this type of high so even though it's over the uh, counter that people are purchasing this you need to be aware of the fact when abuse like any type of substance this can present a very very threatening situation and certainly I've seen people both addicted and very injured by using over-the-counter drugs. Now, I'd like to thank you for tuning in today and encourage you again, if you're interested in getting more information, please feel free to go to my website, and that is www.drugseminars.net, where you can download the slides used in the video today, and for other information that you might find useful if you're dealing with the issue of drug and alcohol use in your adolescent. So thank you, and I look forward to hearing from you at seattleclinical at gmail.com.